This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated. This is a program for excellence in claims handling, a training program to create insurance claims professionals. This is the first in many programs to explain insurance and insurance claims handling from its inception at the time when the first Homo erectus came down out of the trees and decided to walk upright. Insurance is a means of avoiding risk, and risk is something that every human being faces and has faced since the first Homo erectus came to be. Facing risks of loss and injury are part and parcel of being a human. Avoiding risks is also how humans continue to exist and live successfully. When the Homo erectus first climbed out of the trees, they had to avoid predators because they were very little people, usually no more than four feet tall, and they were weak. And so they went down from the trees to get food, and they avoided their predators by being stealthy. They always moved close to a tree so that if a lion, a tiger, or a bear came to make their life difficult or change them into food for the lions, tigers, or bears, they could climb up the tree to avoid the predators, or they could live in a cave to hide in close or sleep in a tree all to protect themselves against the risk of death. Everyone avoids risk. Today, we avoid the risk by diminishing the risk of loss. We do that because every person prefers to live carefully and long. And so it is always practical to avoid the risk of loss or injury. Once people started living in cities, the risks they faced became greater. People living close together often would respond to each other with violence. Villains existed who would take from hard-working individuals the fruits of their labors. People needed to avoid murderers, arsonists, and anyone who would steal their food supplies, because without food one cannot continue. And early on, police were invented to protect those who were not villains, murderers, or arsonists. And this worked for a while because cities started to grow and they needed control and protection for their residents. Everything we as humans do is subject to potential risks of loss or injury. Farmers early on learned that their crops could be destroyed by locusts or hail by a windstorm or a rainstorm, by a hurricane. Merchants found that their ships could sink in a storm and they'd lose everything. A shopkeeper who stored vegetables or clothing could lose everything by an accidental fire, since in those days fire was used to keep warm, Fire was used in lamps to allow people to work in the dark, and sometimes those little fires would escape 
the place they were put and cause accidental fires that could destroy a building or even a whole city. To avoid the risks we face today, we modern humans will drive automobiles, even though we know there's a risk of injury and death in accidents. Some people don't drive their cars carefully. Some cars break down. We wear seat belts in our car to reduce the amount of injury if we're involved in an accident. We buy cars with airbags to reduce the risk of injury even more. We fly in airplanes, although they're known to sometimes fall out of the sky and kill everybody in them. So we try to fly only on major airlines and not podunk national, where we have no idea how well they were training their pilots or maintaining their aircraft. We try to eat hot dogs in restaurants and not from street vendors. And if we wish to protect ourselves as pedestrians, we cross streets at marked crosswalks, not jaywalking. Insurance was invented to make it easier to live with the risks of loss we all face. People with similar risks, like farmers, or shipbuilders, or merchants who found they needed to ship their goods by sea to various markets, gathered together to spread the risks of loss. Agreements were prepared to explain how the risks were spread written on clay tablets, or not written at all, just handshakes between farmers or merchants who worked in the same area and knew each other well. And this would work out most of the time. Chinese and Babylonian traders started practicing risk controls as early as two and 3,000 B.C., the Chinese method of spreading the risk of losses at sea was performed by using multiple ships so that they would ship their goods to avoid catastrophe. And if one ship sank because of heavy weather, the others would make it to the market and their profits would be guaranteed. In Babylon, rather than spreading it over multiple ships, a merchant would obtain a loan to fund his shipment, and he would pay the lender an additional sum in exchange for a promise from the lender to cancel the loan if the ship was lost. Both would profit. If the ship was not lost, the loan would be repaid from the profits made, and the lender would get the extra sum to keep. And if the ship was lost, then the lender would have his extra sum, and the merchant would lose nothing. The Greeks and Romans introduced the origins of health and life insurance as early as 600 B.C. They created benevolent societies that looked after bereaved families, where dozens of families gathered together to join their funds in such a way that if one of them died, the others would care for the family that was left. The Greeks and Romans decided to enter into agreements with moneylenders that amounted to a form of what we now call insurance. A merchant would purchase goods for export, 
using some of his own money and an equal amount borrowed from a lender. Even if the ship or the entire cargo was lost, the lender was assured of getting some of his money back, and the merchant was protected from having to repay the entire loan. And this worked pretty well, since most ships made it to port, and the money lender would profit from the extra sum he took to uh, reduce the extent of loss that the merchant would suffer. And the merchant did very well because he could place into his price the extra amount necessary to insure against the risk of loss. Actual written insurance policies first surfaced in the Italian city-state of Genoa in the 14th century. In fact, the first documented insurance policy came from Genoa and was written in the year 1347. In the following century, standalone maritime insurance policies were formed and groups of individuals gathered together to issue promises to indemnify a person if they lost their ship or shipment at sea due to what was known as the perils of the sea, which could be anything from a heavy storm, a hurricane, or pirates. With this type of insurance, premiums varied based on the uniqueness of the risk being asked to be insured. Those moneylenders and merchants who entered into these insurance contracts studied the losses at sea to ships in their vicinity and realized that out of a thousand shipments, perhaps two or three would be lost at sea. So they calculated, using what is now known as the science of actuary or actuarial science, what amount should be charged to cover the few who would be lost at sea and still make a profit for those gathering together to make promises to indemnify, that is, those who were actual insurers. Insurance in the form of a contract, therefore, rather than as a loan, was a major change that influenced insurance for the rest of time, and now insurance is always written as a written contract and can never be an oral agreement because it is safer for those involved in the business of insurance and those acquiring insurance to know exactly what promises were made and by whom. And insurance contracts became formalized over time. Merchants became stakeholders who would hold the money promised by those who needed to limit their risks of loss. The written contract of insurance became the only method available. Insurers in the early days of insurance were just individual investors and they found that that was a difficult business to be in and joined together in syndicates and joint ventures so that those acting as insurers could also spread the risk among the members of the syndicates and joint ventures because the basis of insurance is always and always has been the spreading of risk from an individual to a group of individuals. Modern insurance is a formalized contract where one undertakes to indemnify another against loss, damage, or liability arising from a contingent or unknown event. Insurance must always be something that is accidental that is not intended 
by the person insured. It is neither contingent or unknown if the merchant sets fire to his vessel and causes it to sink. It is neither contingent or an unknown event if a person sets fire to his home to collect insurance. It is neither a contingent or unknown event if a person claims to have property stolen from his house that he has hidden elsewhere. So the definition of insurance that I just read you is the definition that was enacted by the California State Legislature in Insurance Code Section 22 and is similar to other statutes across the United States that always define insurance as a contingent or unknown event, and that for insurance to respond to a claim of loss or damage, the loss or damage must be fortuitous with regard to the insured. This is the end of the first session of excellence in claims handling, and I appreciate your attention to this program.